Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. As I said last week, I hope to have seen the film uh, uh, in the first weekend um, in order for me to talk about it, like the week right after discussing the overall, the overall filmography. Apologize for the um, any sort of oddness regarding the uh, cutting and stuff. I don't know, sometimes the camera gets a bit wonky. Can't do anything with it either. Um, but it's this is just the best setup I have, so please bear with me. Um, hopefully it won't be too much of an annoyance or distraction. Um, I honestly um, just want to say there's not going to be any spoilers regarding this Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I also realized last week I said Once Upon a Time in America uh, regarding this film, and that is not the what the movie is. It's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I... I, I I realized I made a little blunder, so I hope you all forgive that, and, um, you know, it's a slip of the tongue. You know, but this, this title, the film's title is obviously a homage to Sergio Leone's films Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon a Time in America, and he's a big fan of Leone, so that makes sense. In short, I'll just say this this film is really good. I might even say it's great, even. Um, now, I'm recording this not long after watching the film, so I, you know, I'm still sort of processing it, but I really enjoyed it. I think it, it, it was a real fun movie. Um, again, not everyone's going to see the movie right away, so I don't want any to say any spoilers. But it was really good. The acting is fantastic. Then again, Tarantino, you know, he gets good performances out of really anybody. Even some actors or actresses that, you know, may not seem to be the best in in the realm of acting. But he's, you know, he gets great performances out of those people. Um. There's some that people have talked about. Um, some say Daryl Hannah's not very good at acting. I haven't seen a huge bulk of her work, so I can't truly really say whether or not she is bad, with the exception of few films. But in Kill Bill, she did a very fine job. Um, uh, it, or, I'm not saying that there's any actors or actresses in this film that would be considered to be bad. Not at all. Really, all the actors and actresses are really great. And one, uh, I was thinking about saying this to the end, but I will just say this up front. At the end of the film, you know, during the credits, when they're listing some people, they didn't in the very beginning, they, uh, they have Tim Roth cut, uh, like the gang or whatever, like amongst like I think I think what he was supposed to be at what his character from from what's revealed, he was supposed to be J. C. Brings English Butler, you know J. C. Bring, you know, because of the film's plot sort of is around the time of the Manson family murders. J. C. Bring was at Sharon Tate's place. She uh, they used to date, but then. Uh, while filming a movie with Roman Polanski, uh, she broke off their engagement, and then she married Polanski. But they were still good friends. You know, uh, Sebring and Tate were still fairly close. Uh, and uh, as, as the film goes on. You know, uh, 
some of these characters don't have as huge of an importance. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I, I, not necessarily importance, but they're not as big as you might think. Many have talked about how Margot Robbie doesn't have as big of a part in it like you might think. You know, she's Sharon Tate, and there's this whole misconception that the whole, like, the film was going to focus a good amount on her. And there is a decent amount of, she has a decent amount of scenes in the film. Um, and she is sort of the heart of the film. Many have said that, and I do uh, share that sentiment, that uh, Sharon Tate is the heart of the movie. Um, uh, but, you know, her, her part isn't as big. That's really what I wanted to say, like, J.C. brings, because, you know, some of these characters, or these people, not characters, but these people who are real, real life, who would be, you know, because the Manson family is involved with this, uh, you might think, oh, well, they're going to play truly huge, important parts in the movie, you know, things are going to lead up to that night, and they, and they do, they are important, but... You know, they, they they are important characters to the story, and yet their role isn't as big as you might think initially. The film is, uh, is, is revolves around Leonardo DiCaprio's character as a fading TV star who is trying to transition into films. You know, many people through the 50s and 60s, you know, as television was getting more and more popular, some actors and actresses, you know, if they didn't expand into other mediums, like go into films, or even in some cases, some do plays and do have a very good, like, Broadway or stage career, in addition to television and stuff. You know, if they didn't try to diverse and continue to work in good parts, their career would be just go down, and things were not going to be as great as they once were. And that's what DiCaprio uh, faces in the film. He, uh, and his stunt double, is played by Brad Pitt. Uh, as I'm sure you have noticed from the trailers, if you've seen those. Some I know don't watch trailers. You know, they hear of a movie, they see who's in the movie, who's making it, and any brief description about the film they'll conclude whether they want to watch it. Particularly if word of mouth is good. You know, if people talk about the movie, uh, like review it or uh, discuss it in any capacity, and if it sounds good, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. Or they'll go and watch it. Um, but yeah, he, he, Brad Pitt is his stunt double, and uh, he's also works with him like a, like a handyman and does other things for him. Anyway, like he he sees DiCaprio as like a, his character as a like as his boss. He says that like, uh, like once in the film, uh, for sure, maybe twice, but once for sure. He refers to him as his boss. And now, like he drives his car around quite a bit, um, drives into places, and and it's explained early on why this is. Um, but yeah, uh, so the film is around these two guys in the film industry, or the movie, the television and film business, because, you know, he's trying to see if he can get into, you know, other parts, and Al Pacino is somebody who is looking to see, you know, talking to him, and like, you know, he's trying to say, like, you need to do something else, you can't just do all these, like, after... He did uh, this one TV show he's well known for, Bounty Law. Uh, after that show ended, like he wants to do other things, but he's doing a lot of guest work on various other shows, and he's often the bad guy. So he's like, it's just really like just one episode, and that's it. He's tried to do other stuff, but... Pacino's trying to get him into doing things like, you know, there's like spaghetti westerns, do that. And then DiCaprio's kind of like, oh, they don't, no, those are bad. Those suck. 
like he's seen only a couple of, <laughs> of spaghetti westerns or so. Like, uh, then again, you know, like the the, the Dollars trilogy, for instance. Uh, those came out in 64, 65, and 66, but they didn't come over here in America for uh, at least a number of years after, you know. Uh, while everybody in, what, in Italy that was enjoying the films, those films, uh, when they were released, uh, those who saw them, they enjoyed them. People over here in America and even other countries didn't know them. It took a while for like Clint Eastwood to be a, a bigger star than he was for already for, you know, uh, Rawhide. Um, you know, so, you know, DiCaprio I didn't really see, if he saw a few spaghetti westerns and those aren't, he's like, those are bad, they, they, they suck. Just, ugh. He didn't want to do it. So, and he's doing this show, and he's playing this character, and you see like, Timothy Oliphant, Luke Perry in his final role, uh, and he does a very good job, you know, he's playing a character, um, but, yeah, um, Kurt Russell is in it, you know, there's a, a thing of not being fond of. Brad Pitt, and there's a reason for that. I'm not necessarily going to get into that because, well, I don't, I don't know if this would be exactly a spoiler, but it is something that kind of re comes up here and there throughout the film. So I don't know if I should really mention it, but you know, he doesn't want Brad Pitt in the uh, to be a stunt double. Like he's got his own guys, and he's trying to be like you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But, and then we see a scene with Brad Pitt and Bruce Lee. And that, and that was actually quite funny. Uh, just how all that turns out. Um, we see Steve McQueen, played by Damian Lewis, very briefly. Um, yeah, all, all these guys who are in this film are great. Um, we see Charles Manson a bit. Um, see his family and the followers uh, as they're uh, um, see the Spawn movie ranch. Um, Bruce Dern is uh, you know he's he's George Spawn uh, replacing Burt Reynolds, who was supposed to be uh, uh, Spawn himself, but he passed away two weeks before filming. So, you know, that's unfortunate. Um, as well as unfortunate for Luke Perry to pass away. Um, you know, Luke Perry was really talented. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know what else to say without getting too much into the film. In details that could possibly spoil it. Um, I'll just say, if you enjoy the works of Tarantino, you will, I, I, I'm sure you will enjoy this film. It is a fun movie. It's it's actually quite funny. Um, and there's also like a there's like this little eerie music that plays every so often whenever like the Manson family is on screen, like there, uh, there's just this presence, and we hear this eerie music cue, and I thought that was really cool, that's really effective, like, it, it's like, the film takes place months before the, like, the, you know, the Tate murders are to happen, you know, it's all, like, like in February, so before all that's gonna go down, we see how things sort of go with uh, these characters and just how their lives are in the moment of this time and how when we get to that day how things have sort of like you know changed um, 
it's really just yeah it's it's it, it's really one of those it's just one of those films that you it's really good it's, and I think it's really worth watching on the big screen if you're able to see it if it comes out if it hasn't come out already you know see it I recommend watching it if it's, you're a Tarantino fan the soundtrack's also great um, but yeah and um and some of these actors and uh, actresses who were in the film but then got cut like Tim Roth as mentioned but he was like the only guy who got cut who was mentioned in the credits so he gets a credit he is credited in the movie without actually being in the movie and I think a reason for that is because he's a recurring collaborator all the way back to Reservoir Dogs and like you know Tarantino really likes him uh, and he's a great actor but we get to see also Michael Madsen for a moment and Kurt Russell was there too to additional people who he's worked with a number of times. This is the second time Tarantino has ever worked with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. They work well together. Um, for his tenth film, I would hope that he would bring back you know Tim Roth, Michael Madsen, and there's some of these people he's collaborated with. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson is not in the film too also. I think many people knew that, but on the off chance you didn't, he is not in this film. Another frequent collaborator of Tarantino, uh, he is not in this movie. Um, so it's also been a while since he's uh, worked with Uma Thurman. Um, yeah, maybe they'll uh, talk and work together again. I'd also like to see him work with Christoph Waltz once again also. Um, I'm sure for the Blu-ray and DVDs when that comes out that they'll have the extras and stuff with Tarantino. Like a lot of the Blu-ray and disc, like you'll see all the de deleted scenes. You can see like Tim Roth and uh, James Marsden, uh, Burt Reynolds. Uh, and Burt Reynolds was supposed to be in this movie, so that would have been interesting. It's like see Burt Reynolds as George Spahn, and then we also see Burt Reynolds portrayed in this film by James Marsden, someone else. Yeah. I want to see exactly how, how many people were in the film, but then got cut. Here we go. Come on, you slow computer. James Marsden and Danny Strong are amongst Tim Roth, James Marsden, Danny Strong are the amongst who uh, yeah yeah I don't, it doesn't s seem to say who J Danny Strong was I don't know uh, yep yeah well he's just not uh, yeah he's not even included at all he doesn't even get to have his name shown. I guess he was just some character. An original character, I guess. Regardless, uh, this is a great film. You like Tarantino. You like his work. Yeah, just if you just like want to have a fun time at the movie theater, go see this movie. It, it is very good. I recommend it. Um, uh, it is 161 minutes, and for those who don't want to do the math on... How, how that translates to run time in terms of hours and minutes, it's two hours and 41 minutes. So it's over two and a half hours. Um, but if you like Tarantino's work, I think you can just get through it. Go to the bathroom before the film. That way you don't have to get up and in the middle of it or at any point and then miss part of the movie. It's really worth watching from beginning to end. Um, and uh, you shouldn't be disappointed if you like the work of Tarantino. So with that, I'll just say uh, goodbye. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Have a good week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.